everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. Today, this episode, this video, going to be painting a sort of woodland autumn scene leafy forest floor and that's just a basic model i'm going to base it off the princess bride models that i have but this should be applicable to anything you want to paint that sort of base on now this is going to be similar to the andre the giant base that i did but hopefully i fine-tuned a few things first thing quick draw supplies have supplied the paint for this video a really big tube 120 milliliters of this sienna clay color 120 mil so that's considerably larger than what you're used to the dropper bottles they're about 17 mil some are some are 20 mil now that's an expensive way of doing it this huge tub a couple of pounds a couple of dollars as opposed to a couple of pounds for 17 mil and if you're going to be doing a lot of bases like this you you want the cheaper paint you're not going to notice a difference on this next we're going to need some pva glue i just picked this up from a craft store i'll put a link in the description below first the paint by quick draw supplies they've been supporting the channel for a very very long time since it was an infant not that it's, it's only a toddler now really and if they've got some glue i'll put a link to their glue as well below just so you can pick it up they ship worldwide so that and it's fairly cheap as well so they're able to supply to us all i'm going to be mixing this all together with cheap paint brush again this is supplied by quick draw supplies so big thumbs up to them and I'm going to mix in some artificial snow. This is from Hobbycraft. I think that's worldwide. Certainly fairly confident it's in the US and the UK as well. So it's just some artificial snow. And then I'm going to make my crazy leafy base combining these. So I take, take this cheap brush. Uh, don't use one of your good brushes. It's going to wreck them. And it wasn't until Quick Draw Supplies actually sent me some cheap brushes I realized how important it is to have quite a stockpile of brushes you care a little about. Now, having said that, this is probably not the best thing to mix with a brush and I probably should have used something else but brushes always to hand right and once you've sorted out something to mix it together the mixture was about a third of the paint a third of the glue and a third of that snow and then make sure you add in a couple of drops of water and mix that all together nicely and then I remembered we should probably paint the base so I'm going to paint that with Vallejo's earth and just give that a base color looking a bit like dirt next up now, I was talking to a subscriber, Johnnyo851, and we were just discussing how difficult I found spreading this base mixture I've made using a paintbrush. And he very kindly printed these. He's got a 3D printer, and he's made me a bunch of sort of spreaders, some sort of tools. I showed him the Citadel kind of version, and I wasn't even sure I needed that. So he's printed out all of these, and as you can see, they've got different sort of width, widths of the end part. And... And there's a whole bunch of them. Some of them are slanted as well, as you can see this one. Just loads and loads of tools. So it made me think I should have mixed the, the mixture with this as well. They've got a bunch of numbers on. I'm not quite sure what that means. I'll have to leave that in the comments below. And instantly, I was like, yeah, that's a lot easier. <laughs> so I can scoop it up, slap it on, and then using the point, I can just work it very, very carefully in and around his feet and just being careful not to get this anywhere I don't want. And then I'm going to downsize. So it's beautiful having all these different sizes, get a lot more precision with this and just work it under his shoes and things like that. And I didn't get any of this anywhere I didn't want to. There's none on his shoes. There's none on his trousers. I normally get it everywhere. Uh, I haven't got a paintbrush to clean afterwards either. These just wipe clean. Jobs are good. And, and then I use the largest one just to scrape around the edge and just even that surface up just sort of get it nice and flat around the edge and then ag ag agitated it a little bit just to make the leaf pattern look a little bit better. I'm going to get some earth back out and I'm just going to sort of dapple, dab this in, in a few of the patches where I wanted the earth to show through and it wasn't quite showing through as much as I, as I wanted really. So I'm just using that cheap brush again because there's glue everywhere at the moment and just making it a little bit more brown. After that's completely dried, so I left that on my radiator for about an hour and then I'm going to get some Vallejo's matte varnish again using the cheap brush so it's washing up quite well enough that the bristles are still working and I can keep using this and I'm just going to apply that matte varnish all over the entire top of this autumn -y woodland scene that I've started to create. Next we're going to move on to dry brushing and we're going to start with riser rust. Now this is a rust color but because it's a dry brush paint I'm just cheating a little here. It's really really thick, it's really gloopy, it's very very easy to dry brush with and it's a bright orange, which is the sort of leafy color I want anyway, the, that autumn golden color that you see on leaves in, in the fall. Ah, there you go, I can speak American too. Uh, and we're just gonna dry brush that very, very carefully over the top of the leaves. Now that's why we matte varnished it, just to give it some strength 
really that's going to start protecting it and stop and it's a bit gluey and a bit it's well it just makes it stronger doesn't it so none of these leaves came off at this point and i'm just working this across gently gently building it up getting it as orange as i want just building on top of that raw sienna that we mixed in with the glue next is sun yellow by vallejo now this isn't a dry brush paint so it's slightly harder to work with but you know it's just like normal dry brushing now just as difficult as that and we're just going to put an even lighter coat on the very edges of those snow slash leaves that we've created and that's just going to blend those colors nicely together give it a nice golden autumny look and that's it really so we're going to go around the side using dead black that's just by the army painter any black will do here and just paint around the rim that's going to really make that base pop out Next, I'm going to add some mushrooms. These came in a model box that I got. Um, that's a subscription-based model-related box that you get every month. I'll put a link to the site that sells these if anyone's interested in some mushrooms. Just some fantasy-based sort of toad mushrooms I'm going to make here. I'm going to use bone white to paint the, the stalk or the stem. And then I'm going to use gory red to paint that bright red top that you see on these sorts of toad mushrooms. Just very carefully getting underneath the, the top of them both there. And then we'll leave that to dry a little bit more. And then we're going to use light tone. That's by the Army Paint. It's just quite a light yellowy brown tone. I'm just going to paint the whole thing. Just do the stalk and the, the top all in one go here. I'm not too fussed how this is shaded. And then bone white again. Just going to paint down all the raised bits of the stalks on both sides. Well, all, it's circular, so all sides. And then I'm going to paint in the top using gory red, just bring out some of the, the, the brightness back on the top where the sun would be hitting. Then I'm going to use, use bone white again and just dapple on some dots on top and some spots on top of that toadstool. Next, I'll just show you how I attached them to the base. And it was just using some super glue. I just snipped them off the, the holder for them and then filed down the bottom. And then I just put a little dab of super glue. doesn't matter really how much you put on here. Just try and do as little as you can really. And then we're going to press it. I'm going to press it through all those leaves as hard as I can. And I'm just going to hold it there for it's only about 10 seconds. And then gravity will do do its work. And I'm just giving that a tug to make sure it's set. And it well, make sure it's sitting where I want it. It's not necessarily set yet. So I won't pull too hard on it. And then I'm just going to do exactly the same with the other one. Just get a teeny tiny bit on this thin one and then just pick somewhere random to put it. But I'll put them next to them as though they're growing in a little pomet, 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 little cluster of mushrooms. Again, about seven seconds there, no time at all. Then let gravity set in. And that is Inigo Montoya of the Princess Bride, completely finished and based. And that's that's how it looks like. Hopefully you like that base. I was very, very surprised when I found this method. And I'm not sure how many times you need to paint an autumny forest slash woodland scene on the bases. But, and I also don't know if anybody has already done it on YouTube, but I thought I've stumbled across this by complete accident. If you've watched the original Andre the Giant video, this is not what I was going for, but it happens to be even better. So hopefully that's useful and hopefully you guys can apply that to other bases. So this is really my first sort of standalone basing video. You'll have to let me know in the comments below if you think this has been useful, if this is helpful, any tips for doing this in the future and any specific bases maybe you'd like to see and I can I can go on and do those in the future for you guys. I'll also just show you the Andre the Giant as he was finished. I just did him in a slightly different way, although roughly the techniques were the same. I just used different colors when I when I base coat him so he looks sort of more dull like worms have eaten the the leaves a little bit more but I think that's going to look nice as these models are all together they're not all stood on the exact same patch of land but if you'd like to see how I did that one I did roughly explain it in the Andre the Giant video which I'll put in the link in the description below and I'll just leave you watching this if this is uh, what you'd like to see. Just uh, him spinning, spinning right round, right round, baby, right round. Thank you all very much for watching.